Hello, Quid Apple here <clears throat> on my main account, and today I thought I would go over your Barbarians Faction Wars Barbarian Crypt, stage 21, because I've uh, been lucky enough to beat it. You can see here, here's my team, uh, your starter champion, or excuse me, your 180 day reward, I believe it is, uh, Scylla Drakes, she is very powerful, and I have booked this champion. Actually, I think all four of these champions are booked. Um, let's get into the champion build, and then we'll get into uh, into the characters themselves, or excuse me, into the into the battle itself. So, you saw Scylla Drakes; she's your 180 day reward. And I believe I have her in Destroy Gear is because I've set her in a gear that helps me in Doom Tower. Uh, there's, I think it's Scarab King. That you need to take down his life by 30%, his max HP by 30%, and destroy sets the one that I use for it. And then, of course, um, I have a, there is no real need for accuracy uh, I, for stage 21 or for, uh, I'm not trying to put a slow down or anything like that, so I thought this champion would be better off with uh, high resistance and high defense. And then, of course, Speed and crit rate, and the crit rate still isn't that high. So I could raise it up a little bit more. I could get her crit rate hitting more often, do more damage, and produce more max HP. But this is what I built as I was working into it. Uh, so that's a destroy set and a resilience set on her skills. Uh, this champion I did max out, and I really, uh, really like this skill right here. It's a uh, revives ally on three turn cooldown. So it's a really good one. Puts the ally protection uh, buff on them for two turns. And every time she uh, has, uh, she can increase the speed on a random ally for two turns, that, that speed buff. But she also heals the entire team by 10% of her max HP at the start of every turn. So she's a very powerful champion and was really needed in the uh, Barbarians because you didn't have as much revive. Uh, in the Barbarians before she came. Uh, her Masteries, I did master her out. And if you look at them, I probably could change this a little bit, but I put her on War Master. I could probably find a better use for her end skill because I don't use her in... Um, uh, I don't use her in Clan Boss, but she is good against bosses, so this isn't a bad thing to do to get that extra hit and then actually reduce... Uh, primarily, the, re the one I use her for is Faction War Crypt. She's a good around in everything for as a healer. Uh, she's good for color coding, revive if you need a reviver uh, of magic affinity. So with that being said, uh, you can see here I did accuracy. Um, and then I went over here and I was trying to make sure that she was fast. So she can extend buffs cast by this champion for one turn. Um, and and whatnot. So though, so not a very uh, you know, I could change this up and probably make her better. But she's working really good for me, so I don't want to mess anything up. So that was Scylla Drakes, and then I cruise down here to Sky Touch Shaman, and Sky Touch Shaman is your reviver. She's got um, I've made her with roughly sixty two thousand HP, um, uh, good crit rate, good crit damage. Um, and again, she's in a destroy set because I'm using her in the Doom Tower to reduce the uh, max HP of the Scarab King. So this is the two that I've put together for that. And then, let's see, who's the other team players? Uh, these three, they're all in the uh, in my vault. So I can go up here and go create my faction. And then... Shouldn't be too far, so like third or fourth. Yeah, here we go. So they're all three right here. And to show you what they have and what I've done with them, I'll remove from Vault. And remember, I just like to do things as cheaply as possible. So, so far, uh, this champion, the skills, uh, she's fully booked. Her masteries, I did completely finish them. Um, and you can see that her on her, uh, on the Sky Touch Shaman, on her masteries, I went and just gave her extra X8. Uh, max HP. I could have done other things, but I was just trying to get her HP as high as possible. I'm not trying to really land any uh, accuracy items. I just wanted the health and the speed 
and then over here, um, increased her defense. Uh, this probably isn't the best build for uh, this champion, but again, her skill, her, uh, let's see, this Bloodstain is based off her, she'll take 10% damage of her max HP at the start, and then she'll heal, heals all allies equal to half the lost HP. So she's at 60,000 HP, she'll take damage from enemies and from this skill, and then if she's down to, let's say, 20 or even 10 thousand HP that means she's gonna heal by half of the lost 50,000 so she'll heal each champion by 50,000 points but, uh, as far as the masteries goes it was just for HP uh, nothing too fancy there and then I added this champion and her masteries you can see I just barely put any masteries on her they didn't seem normal uh, necessary um, just a little bit of resist um, if it's hit by a critical attack. And then she's doing, uh, when she inflicts damage to targets with less than 40% HP. So really this wasn't very utilized also. This was just kind of an early character I uh, decided to make because it was spirit. As far as her skills go, uh, I did book her and I could probably do a lot better with this champion. Um, she has a really good skill about uh, places shield buff, uh, removes all shields on all enemies, then attacks them, has a 30%, 40 50% chance of placing a 60% decrease debuff. So she can remove all those shields. It's a really good skill. And her artifact sets, just kind of some bare bones basic items. Uh, her damage is based on uh, defense, I believe. Yeah, her damage is based on defense, and that's why she's in three sets of defense. Very early gameplay. Uh, I put her in speed, HP, and crit damage. And uh, that wasn't very, like, quote unquote good because her crit rate is so low. So, what I probably need to do is go back in and revise her. I gave her crit damage gloves and crit damage uh, amulet. But I could probably do a heck of a lot better on this uh, champion if I get her crit rate up to 65 or higher percent. So, I could probably go through and make this a better character. But again, bad armor, not doing very good, running high resistance. Um, 190, 220, nothing too big. Uh, still, this is an early champion that I chose back a year and a half ago. Nothing too fancy. Um, and then uh, this champion, I, again, pretty much terrible armor, uh, no speed boots, attack, and crit damage. And again, the crit rate is terrible. The crit rate is terrible to run crit damage gloves and a crit damage amulet. But again, I wasn't. Uh, this is a beginning champion. You can see I still even have a common armor piece up here, which I could switch out and make this character so much better. Uh, the skills um, I did because it's a rare champion, they're pretty inexpensive, and this character has low. But it did 100% uh, chance each hit, has 100% chance to steal. One random debuff, it fills a turn meter rate of 25% and places an increased crit rate on all allies for two turns, and then attacks one enemy three times and can, you know, 25% chance of placing the freeze debuff. Really not that good of a character, uh, no masteries, and then last but not least, uh, War Maiden, great champion. I still haven't even finished her yet. Um, as far as the masteries goes, we get to a certain point and you just don't want to continue. But I kept her around because she still does this. Uh, puts decreased defense 100% of the time, 60% decreased defense on all allies for two turns. Uh, her crit rate should be a little bit higher. It's still pretty poor. Um, again, I put her in crit damage. And uh, this probably should be crit damage too. But at the same time, uh, a lot of high accuracy due to uh, the banner. And it looks like also through this. So you can see that the builds are terrible builds for this character. But these five champions make up my build for my uh, group. And then as far as battling, basically what you're going to see are these two champions staying alive the whole time. And then she'll slowly but surely revive them. So this character will keep everybody alive. And then if anybody dies... Uh, Scylla Drakes will revive them. And I three-starred this, and I three-starred on a regular basis. It just takes just takes a long time. 
uh, and no legendary champions as far as having to draw them or nothing. You just had to play long enough to get Scylla Drakes. Uh, War Maiden is a farmable champion. You know, nothing too fancy. She, she dies, no big deal. Um, Scylla Drakes does her job and revives her. And this takes a long time, so this will probably be a long video. But at the same time, it wasn't that difficult. These are uh, a high expenditure of champions. And since I've reviewed this, because usually once you build, beat something, you just kind of leave it alone. You don't want to mess it up. So what I'll probably do is go in and um, work on those work on those crit rates. Those crit rates are terrible. But uh, being able to beat the uh, stage 21 of any faction is great for your clan. And also it's what's needed to get uh, the end all faction more crypt uh, reward for the champion. I'm probably going to make a video for all the ones I've completed just so that they're out there and to show you that you don't have to have everybody booked, everybody mastered, and in the best gear. You just have to have a good synergy. And the two champions that just make this happen is uh, Sky Touch Shaman and Cylindrate. The other three aren't quite as important. Um, and you can build them any way you want. These two are built to uh, help me in Doom Tower. So uh, you can see, like I said, it's not fast, but it gets the job done. And that's all you really need to do. Um, so remember, um, Sky Touch Shaman is doing 10% damage to herself. And then she'll uh, she'll heal everybody by five uh, by fifty percent of the damage total taken. So if her total health is hundred thousand, and I've had her up to eighty, it's not that hard. Uh, if, you, if her total health is hundred thousand, and you get her down to fifty thousand with damage from her skill and from opponents, well then she's going to heal every single ally by twenty five thousand HP every time she has a turn. That revive on death is useful. Um, block debuffs from Sky Touch Shaman. Increase speed on herself. And uh, the Sky Touch Shaman Scylla Drake's combination works in a lot of places. So if you're still in the level 50 range of a champion, you happen to pull, pick up Sky Touch Shaman. I've used her tons of times with uh, Scylla Drakes to just heal and revive. She's just phenomenal in that aspect. And Scylla, Scylla Drake, or excuse me, Sky Touch Shaman also cleans all debuffs. The only thing you ever have to worry about her is occasionally the, uh, the fear debuff is on her, and it might make her uh, like lose a turn or something like that, but it's not that crazy. Stole the debuff and killed him. That was pretty cool. Uh, the champion over here ascended. Uh, he hits two times and has a 100% chance to steal buffs. So if the accuracy check passes, then he can go ahead and wipes out. So that's four minutes. Nothing too fast. But you only have to do four of these battles uh, at any point in time. And this is just what it takes, a little bit of time. It's four minutes to get here, and it'll probably be another four or five minutes to uh, defeat it. I'll just go ahead and let it play through. And um, a lot of my early gameplay, sometimes I put books into champions that I'd never used afterwards. But like I said, once something works, you don't like to really mess with it or waste any more resources on it. So I think I will go back through and upgrade a little bit of the armor because I have so much armor on I extra armor I'm basically throwing armor away 
So to take off some of those old rares, uncommons, uh, even that few commons that I have. But they're level 16, sometimes you don't want to get rid of that stuff either. So you just kind of leave them, you spend a million silver getting them up there, you don't want to throw them away. Rinse and repeat. Keeps going. And that's the thing about Scylla Drake. She heals everybody up. Or excuse me, Sky Touch Shame, and she heals everybody up every time she gets a turn. Twelve thousand nine hundred twenty-five. And remember, other buffs like increase the amount of heal by five percent or ten percent casted or uh, on the champions you're casting them to, if you happen to go through the middle mastery section, it's the same thing. You can increase uh, HP or healing from other sources by 10% or whatever it might be. So you can you can turn a 25,000 into maybe 35,000 or whatnot. It just depends on how, how you put your group together and how they synchronize based on skills, masteries, and armor that you choose to put them in. And I can't remember the last time I lost this. It's just time consuming. And if I want to speed it up, the easiest thing to do is for me to go back and change up a little bit of that armor. But again, I just wanted to show you that it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. See that uh, fear kicked in on her for one turn. And they saw she just cleaned it all off, put a block debuffs on everybody, and then she put on a revive on death for everybody. And uh, War Maiden is still fast from a, from my early game of uh, Arena team, so she's still pretty fast based on that. And it's nice to put the decreased defense uh, from her on to other champions. But I've kind of let her go to the wayside because she's been replaced since... Since then, I don't even use her in tag team, but I, she works here, so why would I want to get rid of her? Especially a 660 champion. Uh, I've raised some to 660. I wish I never had. But that's the, you know, that's the fun of the game is you experiment with things and try different things out. All right, so you can just see how this is going to keep going and going and going. I'm going to put it on pause so this video doesn't go over 20 minutes, and I'll be right back when it's done. Hold on a sec. All right, saved you a little bit of time on that. As you can see, it's coming down to it, and I defeated it. Took 11:23. My best time is 10:57. So this this team has a lot of potential um, to do better, much better. I mean, that's a terrible time, 10 minutes. But at the same time, it's the final clan boss, and I don't want to spend any extra resources that I really don't need to. So if I go in here and I go by faction, or I might go by uh, recently used, then a team comes to the top. And again, uh, this is a good this is a good armor set. I can always increase it more, do extra damage by increasing the defense, or over here, go ahead and increase my crit rate and make sure it goes up high enough. Um, and then uh, obviously Slodrakes is in some good armor. Uh, but this, this is terrible. Uncommon, uncommon. Uh, over here with uh, some common Definitely some rares, and then last but not least, some uh, some common armor over here. So I can definitely do better for this these and speed that up. But I just wanted to share with you what I did to beat um, uh, Faction Crypt Stage 21. So I hope that was helpful. Have a good one.